Hi, my name is Heidi Herr, and I am a special collections librarian at Hopkins. Lots of people are surprised to know that in addition to incredible rare books like the Shakespeare First Folio, Special Collections also has an amazing collection of vintage games and toys, ranging from 19th century French fashion paper dolls to 1960s board games like Barbie, Queen of the Prom, and Mystery Date. We collect such materials because they reveal quite a bit about the popular culture of the past. Studying the games offers us the opportunity to look at how things like gender roles were marketed to children over a period of time, as well as how technology impacts game design. And to be completely honest with you, the games and toys are just totally fun to play. In order to make some of our special collections uh, treasures available to everyone, we launched a JHU Makes Toys Challenge on Instagram. The challenge is inspired by a recently acquired set of charming instructional toy maker cards created by the illustrator Helen Angus. The cards most likely date to the early 1930s and were meant to provide children with afternoons of fun by making toys from common and inexpensive household objects. Some of the toys are very complicated to make, such as this cardboard Viking ship, whereas others, such as this matchstick doll over here, veer into creepy territory. The less said, the better. Today, we are bringing the JHU Makes Toys Challenge directly to you. We are going to learn how to make a toy sail ship, 1930s style, following the instructional cards so whimsically drawn by Helen Angus. Let's go. So before we start, a word of warning. Studying these toy maker cards made me realize that totally different notions of child safety existed in the early 1930s. Children left to their own devices, playing with matches and using super pointy and sharp things to puncture small objects was apparently no big deal. Be cautious and careful while building your super awesome boat. With the word of caution out of the way, we can now go full ships ahoy! Here are the original Matchbox boat instructions from the early 1930s. The toy instructions were issued as individual cards to make it easier for children to use than having them bound in a book. The instructions are very simple, with the emphasis on the visual element. And, unlike recipe cards, the instructions do not include a list of all of the things you will need. The first step is to gather the materials needed to build the boat. To successfully construct your very own matchbox ship, you will need the following items. Two matchboxes or two similarly sized boxes, four matches, a spool of thread, a small knife or pointy scissors, a thick piece of paper, preferably something that is colorful or decorated, some colorful smaller pieces of paper, and this is where perhaps some post-its may come in handy, and finally, glue or tape. And here's a tip for you. If you don't have matches or if you feel uncomfortable using matches for this project, cotton swabs are a great dupe. All you need to do is just cut them down to matchstick size and they work perfectly well for this toy. Once you have gathered all the materials, simply remove all matches from the matchboxes and separate the trays from the lids. Now we are going to very carefully cut a small circle in the center of the matchbox cover. This circle that we're cutting is going to be where we place the funnel a few steps down the line. So having gained confidence and very carefully cutting a small hole into a matchbox cover, we are now going to make two even smaller holes. These two holes are going to flank the space for the funnel. Uh, the holes need to be wide enough for a matchstick to be placed in each one. Definitely look at the detail from the instructional card to see precisely where these two smaller holes should be placed in the matchbox lid. Now we're going to take those two matchbox trays that we emptied earlier and make use of them. We're going to carefully cut a small hole into one end of each tray and place a matchstick in each. We are now going to start to see our ship take shape. We're now going to be creating the funnel. 
To do so, cut a rectangular piece of stiff paper and carefully roll it. The funnel should be around 1.5 to 2 inches tall, though the height of the funnel may vary based upon the type of box you're using. And you may find too that you need to trim it a little bit after we insert it into the box lid. Now we're going to place the rolled cardboard into the spot for the funnel. For the next step, slide the two trays back into the matchbox lid. The funnel that we put in will act as a buffer. We are also going to very carefully put the two matchsticks on either side of the funnel in those tiny holes we cut earlier. We've spent quite a bit of time on construction, so now we're going to do a little bit of prep for decorating our boat. At this time, cut about five to seven small triangles using colorful paper of your choice. As I mentioned earlier, I like using post-its just because it helps me create things of a similar size. The triangles we just cut are going to be flags for the ship, and these flags will need to be attached to some thread. So cut a length of thread to about 10 to 12 inches, and you can add the triangles to the thread now or after we tie the thread to the ship. The matchsticks will serve as supports for the thread knot the thread around the matchstick poking out of the stern, and then loop the thread around the tops of the matchsticks flanking the funnel. Finally, tie the thread to the matchstick placed at the bow of the ship. Be sure to tighten and add flags if needed. Okay. Now step back and admire your handiwork. You have just created a Matchbox Ship 1930 style. Congrats! So amazing, in fact, that even the world-renowned Handy the Smurf is a huge admirer. Thank you so much for making a Matchbox Ship with me. If you're interested in creating additional toys from the 1930s, such as the amazing model Viking ship, you can find additional instructions at our Special Collections Instagram page, at JHU Special Collections. Special Collections has created a special engagement page featuring lots of fun family activities and will be adding additional activities throughout the summer. You can view what we currently have at bit.ly backslash engage JHU. Thanks again, and of course, if you have any questions at all about these toys, about our vintage game collection, or anything else pertaining to special collections, do feel free to reach out to me. My email address is hherr1 at jhu.edu, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again.